All right, guys, I have another tip for you. I hope this one's new for you, but who knows? Maybe you already know this one. Maybe uh, it's just me. Um, I made a part here that's the internal volume of this hydraulic tank. And what I want to do in my bill of materials, is I don't want to report this as one. What I want to do is report it as the volume. So if I go up and I look at my units, let's go up to our units real quick. Document properties here. Let's do a custom. And for our volume units, I'm going to use gallons. So what I want to do is report this as, you know, however many gallons. So let's take a look. Um, if I go to my mass properties, should tell me. So this is 50, about 15 and a half gallons. So in my bill of materials, I want to show 15 and a half gallons. If I go to my custom properties up at the top here, um, what I can do is I could say, let's just put in one for volume here. Okay, that's just a text property. And I want to link this to the actual volume of the part. There's my 15 and a half gallons. There's a little item up here that I ignored for the longest time. And what we can do is instead of reporting this as one, we could use whatever quantity from a property we want. So in a bill of materials, this should report as about 15 and a half gallons. So why don't we go check that out on the assembly really quick. So if I come out here, let's go ahead and insert a new bill of materials. There we go, there's my bomb. Let's go ahead and place that here. There's my hydraulic fluid. Oh, let's take a look. My units for this document are different. So custom, US gallons. Show my bill of materials again. There it is, 15 and a half gallons. And it doesn't have to be in the assembly, of course. It could be in a drawing. So hope this helps you guys. Have a great day.